Really, really excited to be here with everybody. Uh, this is the third and final in a series of webinars I'm doing on herbs and pagans. And this one is kind of, eh, you know, it's one of those that happens to be my favorite. And throughout this webinar, we're going to be doing a, a few things that you may or may not be familiar with. But one thing I'm pretty sure that most of you aren't doing is using herbs to actually double the power of your spells. Yeah, really. Double the power of your spells. We'll uh, get into that in a little bit. Anyway, this is Herbs and Magic. As I said, it's the final one in our series on Herbs and Pagans. And as always, see those comment sections below. If you have questions during the webinar, just type them in there and we'll get back to you, I promise. Okay, so let's get started with herbs and magic. You know, for centuries, pagans, witches have always used herbs in magical ways, right? I mean, we use them in spells. Some of us use them as talismans or perhaps an amulet, and some of us use them as incense. But why are we using those herbs? Exactly what purpose do they serve? You know, we all use them, but why are we using them? Well, we use them because we know, as pagans, that all living things possess energy. And the manipulation of that energy is used to work our intent. You know, that's what a spell is, right? Energy and intent. So this works whether it's a spell or something as simple as carrying an acorn in your pocket for protection, which is something I actually do. And it's the energy and property of herbs that we use whenever we create our magic with them. It's kind of exciting and it's pretty important. So I'm going to say that again and let it sink in. It is the energy and properties of herbs that we use whenever we create our magic with them. So now we know that their properties are important to the person using the herb. I mean, what good would a protection spell be if you use something like, say, yerba mate instead of wood petoni? The first has a property of love and lust, while the latter has the property of protection. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, having a protection spell that actually works for love and lust may not be what you're looking for. So again, those properties are really, really important. Oh, our cave people are back. So we have to know the energy of property. I'm sorry, the energy and the property of an herb before we attempt to use it in any magical way. That kind of just makes sense, right? With so many herbs, literally thousands and thousands of them, that's asking quite a lot of any pagan or witch. Simply remembering a few of them can be taxing for some people. But here's the good news. You don't need to remember the properties of thousands and thousands of herbs. Just a few will do. Perhaps one for protection, another for love, maybe one for abundance. You might add one more for luck. So see, we only need to know a few. Our ancestors certainly didn't remember thousands either. In fact, they lived in very small groups in a very localized area. So there weren't thousands of types of herbs they even could remember. So don't worry about remembering every herb there is. A little later on, we're kind of going to help you out with that anyway. So make sure you stay until the end. Bye, cave people. OK, so herbs. Herbs in incense. Let's talk about that. It's one of the places many pagans and many witches actually use herbs. It's one of my favorite ways to use them, actually, to create a pure herbal incense. I mean, we've all heard of smudge sticks, right? You know, the popular white sage to smudge your house and cleanse it. Yeah, but I like taking that a little bit further. When I create a pure herbal incense, whether it's for my own use 
or for our online store where we can actually customize orders, I combine several herbs together and I use their properties for whatever the goal intent is. So whatever the intent of the person burning the incense, that's what I'm going to create it for. And I'm going to keep in mind, once again, the properties of the herbs I select. For example, <coughs> excuse me, the winter solstice and Yuletide is rapidly approaching. In fact, it's right around the corner. So we could create a Yule incense. Everybody take notes now because you can actually create this Yule incense. You might select juniper berries, cedar, and a little sandalwood. Now for that winter smell, you're probably gonna wanna add a little mint too. So, okay, we've got those four ingredients, but what are the properties and what energies are we working with here? Well, you might be surprised, just four ingredients, right? Here's what we've done. Juniper, we burn for magical protection. Cedar gives us confidence, strength, power, money, protection, healing, and purification. Sandalwood is good for meditation, healing, and manifestation. And peppermint is good for healing and purification. But the best thing about peppermint, it also releases more energy of those other three herbs. So that's pretty cool, pretty amazing. Four ingredients, an amazing Yuletide incense that you can make right after this webinar is over if you'd like. <coughs> yeah, okay, but how do I make that incense, you're asking? Do I just grab these herbs and throw them under the fire and there we go? Well, no, that's not how we do it. You just need to have herbs a mortar and pestle or some other way to grind them in a few minutes. I select the herbs I want to use and I keep in mind their properties and how they will complement each other. And it also helps to smell each herb before you use it. Remember, we're making incense. We're not trying to fumigate our house. It's also important that we use organic herbs. Now, I know a lot of people go to the grocery store and they get their herbs there. But if they're not organic, if they've been sprayed with, say, some pesticide, the entire energy of that plant has changed and so has the properties. So always look for organic herbs. OK, anyway, we're going to place the herbs into the mortar. And while we concentrate on our intent, we begin crushing the herbs. Now, I usually crush mine to what we would call a rough cut type of incense. I don't want to reduce them to just powder. Once they're all crushed together, the, the incense is ready. Now, some people, well, they take it a step further and they'll use water and sometimes even oil to create cones. I'm a green witch and I simply prefer the natural form without the introduction of any other ingredient to my herbs. Why? Well, it's simple. Even water has energy, and I really don't want to pollute my creation with additional energies. Remember, I've selected the herbs I want for the intent I'm seeking. I don't need to add anything to them. Okay, let's take a look at how we actually burn this herbal incense we've made. I think you're going to like this little short video. While it's playing, if you have any questions, just enter them in the comments below and we'll answer them for you. And then just a reminder, next Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Kelly's going to be here with her third installment of Wicca and Paganism, so be sure to join her for that.
Anyway, thanks to our friends at Alchemy Arts for that video. Okay, now let's talk about spells. And this is going to be kind of the meat and potatoes of what I want you to get out of the webinar tonight. So pay close attention because what we're going to talk about when it comes to spells is really important. And you're going to see how we're drawing together all three webinars, the first one with the history of the herbs and how herbs were discovered and how they were first used, and then the healing power of herbs and those kind of properties. And we're going to bring it all together as we talk about spells. So, of course, burning a self-made intent-infused incense that we've just discussed is also a form of a spell, right? I mean, we've got the intent and we're releasing the energy and that's pretty much what a spell is but now imagine the power if we combine the incense with another spell okay so just think about that for a second imagine the power if we combined incense with a certain intent along with a spell of a similar intent and here's an example let's do a simple plet pet blessing spell. So for this, you're going to need a hollow figurine or a stuffed animal that looks or is similar to your pet. We're going to fill that figurine or stuffed animal with athela for healing, lavender and rose for love, and mugwort and wormwood for safe travel and protection from accidents. Now, you're also going to get a small bit of your animal's fur or hair and write their name onto a piece of paper. And we're going to put all of that inside the figurine or the stuffed animal. And then we're going to seal the figurine back up with white wax. Or if it's a uh, stuffed animal, you can stitch it with white thread. And then we're just going to keep that figurine safe someplace in your home. So that's a spell. It's a pretty good spell, and it's relatively potent. We've got some herbs in there that will release their energies. But what if, what if we added a corresponding incense to burn while you performed that spell work? Well, imagine the power. If you create a simple a simple herbal incense, lavender, rose, mugwort. There you go, burn it, do the spell work. All of a sudden, twice as much focused energy and properties would now be at work, right? We've done two spells in one, releasing twice as much energy and twice as many of the properties for our intent. We have actually doubled doubled our spell and this works for every single spell a pagan or a witch casts i can't tell you how many witches i've met that do spells on a daily basis yet never burn corresponding incense does that really make sense i mean you're losing 50 percent of what you could get by simply burning a corresponding incense Almost every spell uses one or more herbs, right? And there's a reason. The energy contained in herbs, as, as everything in nature, is very powerful. Doesn't it make sense now to use herbal incense with every spell? Why would you limit the power of a spell by not using a corresponding incense? As I said, we literally double the energy, and the incense has the added benefit of helping us focus on our intent. With every single spell the witch casts, depending on energy and intent, those who fail to use that incense when casting spells are actually casting weaker spells than they need to. And that's really kind of the real crux of this webinar that I want you to grasp onto. And we're going to do some spell bags and witch balls and stuff in a minute. But if you get nothing else out of this webinar, remember, a corresponding incense doubles the power of your spells. Okay, spell bags, witch balls, and more. Yep, yep, we're going to talk about those briefly so you all know how to make them. Now, spell bags are simply nothing more 
than a small bag filled with herbs that hold the properties and the energies of your intent. For example, you could create a spell bag and carry it in your pocket or with a very small one, wear it as a necklace for protection using some oak moss, some mullen, and whorehound. All three are protection herbs. Now, let's go one step further. Remember we talked about healing properties? Well, say you suffer from some breathing issues. You could simply add a little eucalyptus to your bag. It's a protection spell too, I mean a protection herb too, but smelling it can help you actually catch your breath. Are we now seeing how we combine everything we covered in the first two webinars with this one? Herbs, they really are amazing. Ah, that looks like a witch ball to me. It is a witch ball. And we do have in our group file section an instruction sheet on how to create them. But it's really simple. And right now, many places are selling empty glass balls for ornaments for the Christian Christmas. So it's a great time for us to stock up on these balls for use all year long in making witch balls. And I was at the local dollar store uh, this week and they had tons of these glass balls that you fill with whatever you want. And of course, they're designed to hang on a Christmas tree. And I suppose you could hang them on your Yule tree too, but they're great for witch balls. We simply fill them with the herbs that correspond to our needs. Say a quick spell chant as we fill them. Oh, and don't forget that incense that you want to burn as you're doing this and place them in our house or give to someone who needs it. Wow, a powerful herb charm that's also decorative. Witch balls should never be overlooked as a very powerful means of magic. What about dream pillows? Well, for a dream pillow, we're simply gonna make a spell bag with a specific intent. But instead of carrying that, we're gonna place it under our pillow at night. Want an example? Okay, so let's get some mugwort, some patchouli leaves, and some chamomile. We're gonna mix these together. Now, you don't have to grind this like incense, okay? We're just gonna mix it together. And we're gonna say something like, as I sleep upon this night, bring me dreams of love and light. Take me to places unseen, aid me in my lucid dream. So mote it be. See? A simple spell releasing the intent of herbs, which in this case is lucid dreams. We're just going to place that bag under our pillow and drift off to sleep. Of course, you know me, I'd make that corresponding incense to use during the creation of the dream pillow and make it twice as powerful. That's right. So we've kind of come full circle, haven't we? And we now know that herbs can be used in healing, in cooking, obviously, and that's great for you kitchen witches, and we can also use them in spell work. So herbs really are extremely magical. We've covered a lot, haven't we? And hopefully, after our three live webinars, you now have a better understanding of herbs, their history, their healing powers, and their magical properties. And it's time for you to start using those herbs now in your spells, in your creations, and as healing aids. But I did promise you guys something, remember? Way back, almost at the beginning, I said, there's so many herbs to remember that it's hard. So just remember a few. Well, we're gonna make it much easier for you. To make your journey so much easier, I just uploaded a herbal chart to our group files and you'll find the property of hundreds of herbs right there, right at your fingertips. So after the webinar, go grab the, the uh, herbal chart right out of the Facebook group file section. You know, I've had a lot of fun creating and presenting these webinars to you all. And I hope you've enjoyed the information we've gotten across to you. And hopefully some of it will be of great use on your path. Kelly will be here next Sunday with her webinar on Wicca, 
and paganism. So please be sure to join her for that. I believe that's her last one in her series also, and they're always really interesting. That again is next Sunday, and again will be at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So until next time, merry part and blessed be.